Developer relations, or DevRel for short, is crucial for any developer-focused company, especially in Web3. Developers are a key user group for many Web3 projects, including Chainlink. But as users, developers have a unique set of challenges and requirements. That's where DevRel comes in. DevRel specialists can help you acquire and retain developers and ultimately help your startup to grow. Hi, I'm Richard, one of the developer advocates at Chainlink Labs. And in this quick video, I'll be sharing four key steps to using DevRel effectively. Let's go. There are many different ways to use DevRel, and it's not for all startups. If you're not sure what DevRel is and whether you need it, it helps to understand the Web3 business models that DevRel typically supports. Most developer-focused business models rely on contributions and integrations, but they are often different priorities. For example, an open source blockchain needs more developers to contribute to its code base. Their operational priority is to ensure that pull requests are reviewed in a reasonable time frame. A startup that makes Web3 SDKs needs developers to integrate their technology. Their operational priority is to monitor support channels such as GitHub issues and unblock integration obstacles. Other projects need first build awareness and expand their developer ecosystem. So operational priority there is to speak to developers in a way that builds trust and engagement. All these priorities need different types of DevRel expertise. So it's important to be clear on what your priorities are. Traditional developer-focused companies, such as GitHub or Twilio, have large DevRel departments with highly specialized roles. But if you're an early stage startup, you'll need to concentrate on the most essential DevRel focus areas. But what are they? Let's take a look. DevRel focus areas cover all parts of the developer acquisition process. Developer marketing and advocacy both lean towards increasing awareness. Developer community building and enablement focus on activating developers who are already aware of your project. If you're an early stage startup, you'll need to be selective about what to focus on first. Why? Your first DevRel hire needs to be an all-rounder, but it's unlikely you'll find someone who is equally strong in all of these areas. Prioritizing will help you hire the right person. Developer relations is probably one of the most sought after roles in Web3. In the wider tech sector, developer-focused startups compete fiercely to recruit DevRel talent. In Web3, the competition for talent is even more ferocious. That's why you need to manage your expectations and be ready to compromise. So what are the top skills to look out for? You might think that technical expertise and blockchain experience are must-haves, but generally, these are not as important as softer skills, such as empathy and communication. The thing about technical skills is that they're easier to learn on the job. Certainly, it takes time to learn the basics of smart contract development, but the path to get there is more straightforward. In fact, many high-profile Web3 developer advocates have crossed over from other fields, such as data science, visual effects, or technical consultancy. Each of these fields is technical in general, but they have a lot to learn on the job. They thrived because they had an innate curiosity about Web3 and the ability to relate to others, especially developers. These are the skills to look out for. If you're going to invest in DevRel, make sure that you have a clear idea of what success looks like. This means knowing what metrics to track and having the tools to track them. As before, these metrics will depend on your focus area. When it comes to awareness, the metrics for measuring success are similar to regular B2C marketing. You're just dealing with different channels and content. For example, you might measure content metrics such as tutorial views or webinar participants, as well as downstream actions such as shares or traffic to a GitHub repo or community signup form. When it comes to activating and retaining developers, you might measure metrics such as the number of GitHub issues that are solved and the time it takes to solve them, or the time between first function call of a developer and the follow-up function calls they make, or the number of times a repo is cloned or forked. 
Basically, you're looking for signals that a developer has moved from being a passive observer to an active user, and then is staying active. You'll also want your DevRel person to track certain patterns. Are people repeatedly asking the same questions in GitHub issues or on Discord? This could indicate that you have an issue in your docs or error messages. Tracking these patterns helps to ensure that issues get fixed, which will in turn help to activate more developers. Okay, that just about does it for now. Hopefully, we've helped to shed some light on the business value of DevRel. Most Web3 startups are still trying to figure out what DevRel is and how to do it properly. So we hope this four-step guide gives you a head start. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.